Hi, I'm Nick from Australian Native Bee and today we will be making some soap from Stingless Bee products. I hope you enjoy this. With soap making, there's about a hundred different recipes online and it's up to you what you want from your soap, whether you want it to be a natural sort of a soap or you're quite happy just to have a really soapy sort of a soap. Um, what I'll be using today is a soap base. So this is basically uh, a soap uh, base that can be used for making all different sorts of uh, soaps. Uh, people buy this, they add their scent, uh, different scents to it, they add colours to it, they add all sorts of things. So for simplicity, I've decided to use that um, as our base and I'll show you what else we're going to use. This is stingless bee wax. I'm using two blocks of stingless bee wax, two 15 gram blocks in this recipe. Um, I've tried it with one, it works quite nicely, uh, but if you want a bit more stingless bee wax you can use two and that's what we'll be doing today. This is what I call propolis grinds and it's a product that I think in future people will find all sorts of uses for. Uh, it's left over in the solar wax melter after all the uh, stingless bee wax has run out of it. And what I've done here is just add, um, put it through a blender and you end up with this beautiful, you know, uh, fine grind. We'll be using this as an exfoliant in the soap. Um, it has uh, plant material, pollen, and probably some remnants of stingless bee wax left in it. It's, it's truly a uh, propolis, if you like. This is uh, cocoa butter, and um, I had some of the initial tests uh, I did with soap tested by somebody else, um, and she suggested adding some of this in to soften the soap on the skin and leave some of those body oils uh, left there. If you want to make your soap softer, she also suggested um, squeezing one of those vitamin E tablets into your recipe. So yeah, that's what we're using today and let's go make it. Let's quickly go through the ingredients. One kilo block of soap base of your choice. 50 grams of propolis grinds. If you don't have that, you can use coffee grinds, 50 grams of cocoa butter, and 15 to 30 grams of stingless bee wax. Okay, so what I've got here is just an old bit of timber, and more importantly, an old pot. So I'm just gonna turn the gas on. And we want it on fairly low. You don't want it cranking because you don't want to burn anything. All right, so first of all, I'm going to add the butter. And then with that, I'm going to add the stingless bee wax. And you can see it's melting quite quickly in there. Now, once that sort of hits the edges, I'm going to put our block of soap base in. So basically what I'm going to do is just keep this moving. I don't want it burning. So very low and I'm just going to keep this moving. When this block gets lower I'll probably swap to the stick and I'll be back once that's all melted and combined. Now why that's while that's melting over there, what I'm going to do is put our propolis grinds into our um, soap mould here. This is just a uh, baking tray, silicon baking tray. I bought it from Woolworths. You can buy them online. Um, and they make great soap moulds. This one's got a wavy sort of a pattern in the top. And I'll just be spreading this out over the bottom of the tray and the idea is that um, the soap mix is going to actually soak through this and you're going to end up with a nice little top on the top of the soap just give it a dark appearance on the top so just even that out flat and with this soap mold I'm just going to be putting 
one teaspoon or a little bit less in each all right we're just about done everything's melted and combined this sort of foam that you get on top that's the native beeswax sort of creates a foam sort of a milky foam and what we're going to do now is pour, pour it those ones I want the uh, stuff to be mixed throughout the soap but this one what I'm going to do is actually use the stick and I'm actually going to pour onto the stick and that's just going to slow down the soap and prevent it from lifting the uh, grinds off the bottom of the soap mould so just steadily pour it in you can see some of it starting to harden now what we're going to do is this is a little blowtorch and if you blowtorch the surface you can remove some of those big bubbles Uh, some of these moulds, when you're done, just put two jars either side of your mould and that'll keep it more straight. After you've waited the full eight hours dry time, you can cut up your soap. You can actually buy soap making cutting tools, um, but I'm just using a knife here. Um, and you can see it works quite well to cut your soap blocks to whatever size you want. Here's some I prepared earlier. This is from a different batch that I made earlier. So you can see the top there. This one I didn't blow torch the bottom so you can see it's got a sort of a milky bottom on it. But uh, yeah, it's a very nice soap. And uh, you can make some yourself at home. <laughs>